We're going to use pattern prediction in this video for trading weekly options on SPX. And at the end of this short video, I'm going to put up two additional videos on the screen for you to click on using the same method for pulling money out of the market each week trading SPX options. And we're starting right now. So on Sunday night, I posted this chart on my SPX premium blog that shows a cumulative price movement of SPX in five minute increments for Tuesdays in recent weeks. And we're just looking at the cumulative price pattern for Tuesdays because it's my belief that each day of the week has its own characteristics and really should be traded accordingly if you're gonna be day trading. And what I'm looking for is SPX to potentially trade in this similar pattern the following Tuesday. So the general idea here is that if in the morning SPX looks to be tracking this recent five minute price action from the past few weeks, which is what this chart is showing, I'll be able to establish a directional bias to look to sell same day credit spreads on SPX, also known as zero DTE. And now that SPX is going to five expirations per week, I'm gonna be looking to this method to increase my frequency of high probability options trades. So here's how it works. Before Tuesday's open, I'm looking at this chart and what I'm looking for is some back and forth action in the morning with more of a bearish bias heading into the afternoon. So I'm already going into the day with kind of this potential uh, trade setup, right? And at this point, I'm looking to sell zero DTE call credit spreads if a similar pattern starts to form. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the chart to see how this played out. So here's the five minute chart of SPX and this is how the market played out on this particular Tuesday. We had a large gap up, which you know, I love shorting gaps and I, was, I actually had some of the, <laughs> the data behind it to do that. So we had a large gap up. I'd already marked off a couple levels here and essentially, you know, we had a gap window and then a gap fill was way up here. I didn't think we were gonna get there, but regardless, the pattern started to play out. We had a gap up, we kind of pulled back and then started to rally again. Now there's another sort of uh, strategy here that kind of feeds into the bearish bias and that's the opening range breakout. So you can see, you know, in the first 15 minutes, we broke out to the downside and I was basically shorting the retest by selling a call credit spread that expired the same day. I sold the 4085 call and bought the 4090 for a net credit of $1.10. This is a CCS or call credit spread. And that was essentially looking for uh, time to decay or get the move. And in this case, I actually got the move and was able to close it about whatever, seven, eight bars later. Uh, which is about an hour or so, I was able to buy that spread back for about 40 cents. So I sold it for $1.10 and I was able to buy it back for 40 cents. Let's do some quick credit spread math to kind of understand the risk reward here. I received a $1.10 credit for the trade. Since this was a $5 wide spread, the risk is the width of the spread at $5 minus the credit. So my max loss or the most I can lose on this trade is $3.90. Now the profit of this trade was the difference between the credit I received, the $1.10 minus what I bought it back for, which was 40 cents. So my profit on this trade was 70 cents, less commissions, of course. And if you look at the return here, since I'm risking 390 and was able to book 70 cents, that's just under an 18% gain in about an hour on my risk. So that's my return on risk. That's how I look at this. Obviously, there's some commissions that's gonna you know ding a little bit out of that. But that's what I got, and we'll see you in the next video.